Once in a while, a film comes around that really breaks you in a beautiful way, that has the power to move you and challenge you to bring about a lot of humanity and empathy you didn't know existed. Films can be a powerful medium and for the most part are wasted on just image and noise, but when a film comes around like The Whale, everything comes to a standstill once it captivates you and you cannot look away or deny its resonance. Hello and welcome back to another episode of George Reviews, and on this episode I'll be talking about The Whale, the new Darren Aronofsky film starring Brandon Fraser, and one I've been anticipating for a very long time ever since I saw it was announced as a concept film, and that Aronofsky was attached to direct and Fraser was set to star. It is such an amazing combination of talent and it really paid off with a film that is both intimate and emotionally gut-wrenching. So let's get into The Whale. I need to know that I have done one thing right with my life! The Whale is about Charlie, an English teacher who is an overweight recluse played by Brendan Fraser, who teaches a writing class via Zoom. He doesn't show his face or identity to his students, and it follows the day-to-day -day life he leads and how he is basically killing himself by overeating all while trying to reconnect with his estranged daughter, played by Sadie Sink. Now, I've been a big fan of Aronofsky's work ever since I saw Requiem for a Dream, a film that I love but can never rewatch. And I've always respected and admired his work, and although I have not seen Pi or Noah, I have seen the bulk of his work with Black Swan being my absolute favorite film of his. I even enjoyed his last film, Mother, which had an onslaught of a lot of critical hate. The man knows how to present a unique cinematic experience, and we got that in a different way with The Whale. I also grew up on Brendan Fraser like many kids from the 90s, and even though I haven't seen many of his dramatic roles, I have always admired his spirit and complete ease he has in disappearing into a character, while still maintaining his magnetic charm. All these ingredients and passion and care for this material really delivered something unique and heartbreaking with The Whale, and I quite loved this film, as I knew I probably would, even with the initial reviews were mixed prior to the film's release. So you could say I had my expectations high for this one, and that's usually something I try to stray away from. But knowing Aronofsky's reputation with the films I've seen of his, I knew he had his audience in good hands. The Whale is heartbreaking and challenges you emotionally. There's an honesty and vulnerability that Aronofsky brings to this material. To me, the film represents themes of regret and time, or losing time, as one is running out like Brendan Fraser's character of Charlie is suffering onto himself and doing everything he can to hold onto his relationship or repairing the relationship he has with his daughter Ellie. He knows he doesn't have much time left to his life because of his eating disorder, so he does anything and everything to try to reconnect with his daughter to writing her school essays for her. This film really parallels with Aronofsky's other film, The Wrestler, starring Mickey Rourke. The two films have many similarities, but I do not consider this Aronofsky ripping himself off here because the goals and characterizations of both films are quite different. The story, the plot to both of those films are just a blueprint for the characters to work in and fill colors on the cinematic canvas to portray some of the most harrowing and painful gut-wrenching material I have seen in a long time. This film is filled with so much trauma and tragedy. I connected more with The Whale on a personal level than The Wrestler because there's more vulnerability, more pain, more empathy. It's not just about Brendan Fraser playing a guy who overeats in a fat suit. There's much more to it than that. Charlie is a man who abandoned his family, who lost the love of his life, who has a passion for writing and getting to the heart of every soul he teaches to. That there's so much beauty in this character that it becomes tragic to see everything unfold for him as he grapples with so much loss to try to rekindle so much kindness and wisdom that exists within himself. Especially in a world where cynicism and apathy run amok and run deep and have become the norm. The Whale really reflects the empathy and sadness of the modern world, not just in reality and the day-to-day, -day, but in the current state of cinema or greed and soul-sucking corporate interests that have taken a hold of the majority of films released that trumps any passion and genuine artistic vision. That a film that was released into the mainstream in 2022 with so much heart and emotion without trying to force-feed any type of interest, grander than the story it is trying to tell, is refreshing for such a high-profile film such as The Whale. And not to go on a tangent, I know there are films such as ones distributed by A24 that make it into the mainstream, but compared to other big studios, it's refreshing to see something like The Whale, which is still in theaters as I record this review, to really triumph over the big blockbuster type franchise films that have a dominance over the market and theaters, to at least coexist that it's still possible to tell stories that can move you and get to you emotionally, and that the artistic vision has just as much of an importance as the marketing or star power attached to any film. At the end of the day, I'm not blind to the fact that 
that the film industry is a business just like any other, which is why, again, it is just so refreshing to see this in the mainstream is what I'm trying to say. Anyhow, rant over, back to the review. What I also love about this film is a passage of an essay Charlie likes to hear over and over again in reference to the novel Moby Dick, and the parallels that story has to this film just works so well in terms of wanting to find something greater in a pursuit, which is interesting to see what Charlie lost in his pursuit of true love is a greater loss of his family than the reward or light at the end of the tunnel, which brings in a lot of regret for our character. No matter how much he laments or cherishes the love he had, the loss is even as great, if not greater, than losing ties with his daughter, which sank him into a pit of despair that is killing him day by day. It's just so painfully poetic in my eyes. It would be redundant to say at this point that Brendan Fraser is magnificent in his role as Charlie, that the whole film rests on his shoulders to deliver a timeless and mesmerizing performance. What you've heard is true, and it is so heartwarming to see him back center stage as someone who grew up with his work and a varied array of characters he has performed over the years. I've always had a soft spot for the man in his work and he steals the whole film and the rest of the cast compliments him nicely. Sadie Sink who plays his daughter Ellie is also very fantastic in her supporting role and what she gives in the screen time she is allotted is great as well as Hong Chow who plays his friend and nurse Liz is such a standout as well that no one seems to be talking about her performance from other reviews I've seen. She definitely has to deliver some pretty intense emotional scenes as well in support of what Frazier brings to the film, so she should not go unmentioned here. Aronofsky once again delivers in the directing department. As much as I've enjoyed most of his other films, I usually never go into one expecting it should be a masterpiece, and usually haven't returned to many of his other films, but to me, The Whale solidifies him as a truly great, uncompromising filmmaker. The film is so grounded. There is little to no style to the filmmaking, which isn't a bad thing because the simplicity of the cinematography elevates the great performances and characterization. The script by Samuel D. Hunter is based off his same play, is great though there is a little subplot involved the daughter and the missionary that kind of puts the film at a standstill and not in the best way in my opinion but didn't totally ruin the experience but it dragged on a little longer than it needed to be the way also gave me everything i was wanting and more out of this experience it is meticulously crafted and brendan fraser made the entire film so moving and haunting that even if you don't connect 100 percent to the film or its content you still cannot deny his amazing work here which is why i'm going to rate the whale four and a half stars and that's going to be my review on the whale now what did you think of the whale did you see it yet did you love it did you hate it what did you think about it let me know down there in the comments and please like and subscribe if you'd be so kind my name is george ray thank you so so much for tuning into this review please remember to keep calm keep cool keep chill embrace great cinema i'll see you on the next video until then peace out